Now many of my subscribers complain me that hey why you are using the Ubidot server which got quite complex programming for the simple IoT projects why not you are using any other IoT platform which got way more simpler you know programming steps for that same IoT project and I do have a couple of reasons for using Ubidot and one of the major reason for using Ubidot is I must have told you this before but I didn't get a proper time for announcing this but hey guys I am a valuable employee of Ubidot. Yes, I am an employee of Ubidots who work remotely from India and being an employee, I need to constantly work on their server, I need to constantly work with their libraries and hey, I have a good news for you guys. I, being an employee of the company, heard your problem and I along with the team have developed a new library which got way more simpler steps for the same IoT project. Yes, so now onwards, you will be able to use Ubidots with very simple steps and not only that, we also developed some of the cool features along with it which are not at all available in any other IT platform. Okay, that's it. I'm just kidding. I'm not at all an employee of Ubidots. But yeah, that is the fact that they developed a new library with simpler steps which is very easy to use for anyone and also they got some new features which are quite interesting and quite unique as well. So in this video, I'll be testing out the new library and I'll be uh, let you know what are the new features in this and how to use that new library. So watch this video till the end and I will let you know everything regarding the new library. So we're starting with this video. So first of all, I will let you know from where you need to download the new library and what are the necessary steps before using that new library. So first of all, you need to download the new library from the link uh, which is attached in the description of this video. So here is that library. You just need to download it and install it on your Arduino IDE. Okay, so after that, uh, make sure your Arduino is up to date. Right now I'm using the Arduino version 1.8.10. And one more thing which you need to consider here is that uh, you just need to update your ESP8266 boards packages. For that, you need to go to tools, into boards, into boards manager. Here, search ESP8266. Okay, so here is the boards packages. I have updated this to 2.6.1 version. So just make sure that you are uh, updated with this version only okay and one more important thing here to note that your system should have python 3 installed in it already in my macbook that were already installed but still some of the certificates were missing so i just uh, reinstalled that python 3 with the proper certificates and i will leave the link for you know downloading that python 3 in the description of this video starting with this video first of all i will test one of the example core onto this node mcu board okay so i'll go to the files into examples into UV dots ESP8266 and into let's take an example of send values HTTP okay so this is the example code for sending values to UV dots server now before jumping into the code I will open one another code which works with the previous UV dots library for the same function of sending data to the server let us open that example code which is available with examples into UV dots MQTT library and to publish okay as you can see, this code and this code has a lot of differences, okay? It includes a separate function called callback. It has a several commands in the setup function while it has several commands in the loop function as well. While you can see in the new library, there is only two function which is setup and loop. And in the setup, there are just two lines declared, which is also for serial begin and for connecting our node MCU to the Wi-Fi. No complexity at all. So by comparing these two code, you can easily say that a new library is way more powerful and it has way more easier steps. So let's jump into the code. Let's see what are the functions used in it. Okay. So first of all, the simple library ubidots.h. Now when I talked to the ubidots team, they said we want to make just single library for all our services. Okay. Maybe it's MQTT, maybe it's HTTP, maybe it's node mcu board maybe it's esp32 board they want to integrate everything in this u.h library and they are still working on it currently this new library supports only the esp266 boards it doesn't support the esp32 boards and uh, currently this uh, u.h library works with http protocol only it is not at all working with the mqtt protocol but the team is still working on it and in future this library will be updated with both mqtt and esp32 and other boards as well now here one question may arise on your mind that hey previously you were sending the data with mqtt right now you are using http so what's the thing right now 
See, uh, let me tell you one of the question from my subscriber. Now, the subscriber asked me that, hey, Sachin, I'm very much confused with the HTTP, MQTT, UB dots, Adafruit, Blink. I'm very much confused with all these terms. Kindly let me know the difference between all this. So when I heard this question for the first time, I was like, Okay, so this was the question which came in my mind as well in my early college days. So let me just clarify you with these terms. First of all, UB dots, MQTT, Blink, these all are the servers. We can regard it as a destination. They are the destination just like India, US, China, they are all the destination where we need to go. Okay. So let's take an example. Jupiter is a destination. Now for reaching out to one destination, we have many ways. Okay. We can go to go through airways. We can go through roadways. We can go through railways. So we have many ways to reach to single destination. Similarly, for a data to reach Jupiter's destination, data has many ways to travel it can travel through http protocol it can travel to mqtt protocol so there are many different ways for data to travel to ub dots okay and each path takes different time to reach okay because they have different latency okay so http protocol uh, takes a bit more time as compared to mqtt protocol for the same data to deliver on the destination so this was the you know clarification on what is the server and what is this protocols i hope this is cleared in your mind and if it is clear if you love this example do let me know in the comments and give a thumbs up okay so moving ahead with the code so after that library there are three variables declared here which are compulsory regardless of any server you are using okay so first of all we need to define the token which is your unique key of that server then the Wi-Fi SSID and the password, which is of course needed uh, for the board to connect to internet. Okay, so you can't ignore these three, uh, you know, variables in any of the coding. Okay, so first of all, I will uh, define the UBDOT token, which is available here. Into API credentials, copy, and uh, yeah, you can paste that token here. Then the Wi-Fi SSID name and password, which will be different in different cases. I will just write my router's SSID name and password. Okay, moving ahead here, uh, the method is defined as HTTP. Okay, in future, you can you may also write MQTT right now it is not supported, but in future it will be supported. Okay, so here is the method or the uh, protocol is defined on which the data will be traveling to the UB dot server. Moving ahead on the setup function, as I already told two simple lines, one for serial begin, which is uh, enabling the serial monitor and other is to just connect our node MCU board to the Wi Fi. Pretty simple. Moving ahead into the loop, first of all, we have three variables declared. Now, these three variables are just uh, storing a random values in it. Okay, so these three are variables in our practical project. These three variables can be the you know sensors value. Okay, this is example code. So we are just taking the random numbers. Ubidots dot add function. Now this function is used to store data into the variable. Now before jumping into the variable, let me tell you the flowchart of the Ubidot server. So first of all, we have a UB.Server. server under UB dot server. We can have different devices just like node MCU, just like ESP32, just like Arduino. So we can have different device. So first variable in UB dots is the device name inside each device name. We can have different, different variables just like inside ESP266. We can have a temperature sensor. We can have a sound sensor. We can have relays. So there are different variables and inside variables, we have the data assigned to that variable. So this is basically a flow chart of UB dots particularly. So in this uh, UB dots add function, we are just storing the data into the variables. Okay. And the variable name is defined as variable name one. We can change it according to our choice. Let's just keep it very simple like value one. Okay. So we'll assign the variable name as value one, value two and value three, which is quite simple and easy to understand. So these are variable created in this variable. The data will be stored by this function. Moving ahead, we are sending the data to the server with a simple uh, function called ub dots dot send. Okay, this function will send all these three data to the server. Now, one question arises here that hey, where is the device name assigned here? So here is a cool feature which I will be talking later in this video. First of all, let us assign the device name here inside the function. Okay, so let us assign the device name as techie SML. So techie SMS is the device name value 1 value 2 value 3 are the variable name and the data is stored in this variable itself pretty simple pretty straightforward and nothing complex at all so we are already done with this first project with all the programming needed okay 
let just click on the right board and port and click on this upload button and uh, let us open the Ubidot server and go into the devices here as you can see that there is no device called techie sms made mentioned here this is also a feature of Ubidots that uh, every device name mentioned and every variable mentioned in the code will be automatically created on the server side you don't need to do anything on the server side the server will recognize the code and make the new devices and the new variables automatically okay okay so code is uploaded let us open the serial monitor okay it's trying to connect to the router okay it's connected it got its ip address let us wait for this uh, node mcu to send the data so initially it was not at all responding so i just resetted this board and as you can see it says value sent by the device let us see that device okay refresh this page and uh, it should create a device name techie sms okay so as you can see here the device name techie sms is already created and if we look inside this device we have three variables with the random value assigned to it so this was the simplest project which was made way more simpler with the new ubidots library and similarly we have one more example for receiving the data from the server which i will also let you know here and into get value http okay so we'll just have a quick look on this on this example as well we won't be able we won't be you know running this example code so here of course three things we need to declare the name SID name password and the token number nothing new in this then here as i said we have two variables in the server one is the device name one is the variable name so we need to define the device name here and the variable name here from which we need to fetch the data that's it nothing complex at all uh, as you mentioned these two things the data will be stored into this value float which is created inside the loop that's simplest thing which i can ever expect from this you know iot server or the programming of an iot server so this is yet again a simple code for uh, this new ubidots library which i found it pretty simple now let's talk about the cool new features which came with this new library so let's start with the feature number one first of all as i told in the example code there was nothing mentioned inside this uh, ubidots.send function now why it was not mentioned because this new library supports a very cool feature in which by uploading this code without mentioning the device name what this code will do this code will send the request to the server and server will create a new device with the device name similar to the mac address of our node mcu board let us upload it it will make this statement way more clear let us upload this code simply okay so code is uploaded let us open the serial monitor quickly right now okay so value is sent by the device let us open the devices again okay as you can see we have one more new device created automatically and this number is nothing but the mac address of the node mcu board from the data is being sent okay if we see inside this device name you will be able to see the same variables with the random values now what is the use of this feature let's take an example you're building a product okay so you're mass building a simple product let's take an example like you're building a product of monitoring temperature sensor remotely okay so you're building hundred of devices what you can do is you just need to create a variable name just assign the data to that variable and simply upload the same code in hundreds of node mcu board without mentioning the device name at all now even after uploading the same code the ubidot server will recognize each node mcu product as a different and unique device and you can easily monitor the temperature sensor data coming from different different devices on the account in a different different mac addresses long story short this cool feature is way way more useful to the person who is trying to build masses of projects okay who are trying to build a single project in a mass quantity or to that people who are using ubidots professionally for the business okay so if you are developing the products the same code will work with each and every devices nothing to worry nothing to change at all let's go to the second feature which i love the most and that is the uh, device type feature for that go to the examples and open the example called uh, device type okay send values device type okay okay so here is the code which i have modified a bit now before using this code we need to go to the ubidot server okay click on this devices and click on this types button <clears throat> okay so i have created two devices one is sensor and one is red okay let's make another device let's click on this plus button 
okay we need to give the device type name here okay so what's the device type let's just understand it first okay let's take an example you are building iot product with uv dots okay and single iot product let's take example of a home automation product in home automation there are different different types of iot units you need to install in the home which can be a smart switchboard which can be a current sensor which can be a light sensor sound sensor okay which can be a you know air quality sensor so there are different kind of sensors and there are different kind of actuators which are relays or motors okay let's take example of these two different categories in a single home automation product okay now this smart feature can categorize the data coming from different different device types one device type is sensor and another device type is actuators and, and will represent the data in way more uh, you know easy to understand manner let us create a device type called uh, control which is easy to recognize like relays and motors these all are can be considered in the controls you know device type and the api label is automatically created as control now here we can assign the color as well so this will be very much easy to you know color code different devices types okay so i will put this uh, motors color as uh, yellow okay and even you can select the device icon okay so i will uh, put the icon uh, of this gear uh, this is way more you know uh, easy to clarify that this is a controls option and uh, next you can de define the device properties you can assign the variables in it you can assign the task as well but right now i'll keep it simple i just color coded the device type controls with a yellow color and uh, gave it an icon of that gear icon okay so uh, let us upload this code with the device name device type name as a control okay rest of everything will be keep it as it is now let us click on this upload button and yeah it's done uploading let us open the serial monitor so it's signed connect to the router and it's connected successfully let us wait for this device to send the data and the data is sent by the device layer let us open the device okay so as you can see there is a new device created with this gear icon with this yellow color coding so this is used to you know uh, differentiate between the different device types now how this method or this device type example uh, is useful now this is useful for the people uh, working in a group or working in a team uh, using this kind of color coding and uh, using this kind of different icons a team or a members in a team can easily recognize that yeah this yellow color is for the controls this red color is for the sensors this spark uh, design is for current sensor so this uh, likewise we can uh, you know recognize different different devices with this different different colors using this device type example so this is yet another cool feature from ubi dots which uh, i didn't find in any other uh, iot you know servers which i have used till now so yeah this were some of the features and this were some of the updates on this new ubi dots library which is released recently i hope you like this video and got to know something new this time if yes then do let me know your thoughts your suggestion regarding this video regarding this new library and features in the comments of this video and uh, yeah subscribe my channel if you haven't to see more such amazing iot project tutorials and the detailed reviews of this new libraries and new features and to the people who still find this simplest method a bit complex then stay tuned with this channel because this january i am bringing something very cool very easy to use for your iot projects so just stay tuned with my channel and this january is for the iot beginners out there so yeah, ending this video here. Just wait for my next video. Let's explore, learn, share with me. Take care, Samir.